Hey everybody, Vivian here with a video tutorial I've prepared for Scraps of Darkness using their June Firecracker Kit. This month's kit is really fun. Uh, it has some a, a couple of different pattern papers from different manufacturers. Today's tutorial is going to feature papers from Bow Bunny. Um, it's their uh, patriotic collection. I don't know what the title of it is but it's got some beautiful saturated reds and blues and distress. This shimmers paint is included in the color add-on, shimmers spritz, I'm sorry, and um, there's also some beautiful pastes and a mask in the color add-on as well. I'm going to be using mist today primarily, and I just wanted to share with you a couple things you can do with mists. Uh, I wanted to use my mist in conjunction with this liquid frisket, um, it's a liquid mask, so what you can do with it is paint on different patterns. And once you do that, those patterns are shapes. And once you do that, those areas will completely resist any further applications of media. Today I felt like being a little bit more freestyle, so I didn't paint on any shapes. But I am splattering in some uh, texture. And then I'm going to spritz some mits, mists uh, the Shimmers Mist that came with the kit. Um, the great thing about this combination that Melinda put together is that mist, it's a soft blue, and you'll see it in a second, it matches the blue of this paper perfectly. It's just a little bit more intense, so it'll show up well on the, on the paper. I decided to drag some of the frisket along the page because I wanted to create some areas that were completely preserved. I've used liquid frisket quite a bit in my watercolor paintings when um, I've created, for example, a shape like a peach and I've painted it a beautiful soft orange and yellow and red. I've mixed those colors in there. And then I decide to paint my background and I want to make sure none of my background infects or contaminates the area that I've painted for my peach. So I would let the peach dry and then paint this frisket on top very carefully and let it dry and then with wild abandon paint my background without having to worry that my background colors are going to leak into my area that I've reserved for the peach. So in this case um, I just wanted to play with texture a little bit. In many ways mists are very much like watercolor paint so I decided to use the frisket in conjunction with our mists. And I'm not pre preserving shapes per se, but I am preserving um, abstract patterns from the splatters and the dragging of the brush. Mm, and I'm preserving the beautiful paisley patterns uh, of the Bow Bunny paper. I've been playing with my mist a lot lately and coming up with some really fun effects. I've been using primary colors a lot, so they're gonna make their way into this video as well. Um, but I've been spritzing with water just a little bit prior to spritzing with my color, and um, it ends up creating effect that I tend to like more than spritzing directly with the mist onto dry paper. And one thing to remember as you mist on top of your dry liquid frisket is that you may see color, intense color, pool on top of those masked areas. But remember, the reason that it's pooling is because that area is not absorbent. So it may give you the impression that you have darker colors there and that area is going to be darkly misted. But all of that's coming off and all of those areas are going to end up showing the color of the paper underneath. Um, and also, if you don't want to waste your mist, um, you can do what I did, which is, with my fingertip, just push the pigment off of the masked areas onto the paper and let it concentrate where frisket meets dry paper, those lines where frisket meets dry paper. And there, that way you can have some cool um, accentuated edges. I splattered on a little bit of uh, yellow and a little bit of red mist from my stash uh, 
because I've been working with primary colors a lot lately and I like the way it mixes when all the mists are wet, the way they mix on the page. Here you can see I'm pushing that media off of the masked areas because it's a waste of, of mist and I want to accentuate those edges um, of the masked areas with darker color. I decided to use the mask a little bit. This is another way you can use your mists, spritzing them through a mask and um, this beautiful mask came in the color add-on this month. Um, with this soft blue mist, um, the pattern is going to be really faint and um, subtle. And you can turn that over and um, get the impression of the mask, um, the plastic areas of the mask. Another thing you can do with your mists is spritz them or eyedropper them onto natural fibers. This is one of several flowers that came in the base kit, the June Firecracker kit from Scraps of Darkness. And I'm just eyedroppering some of the blue shimmers mist on top of a damp flower. And as you can see, this mist is interesting. I really like this about it. It's got a very fine um, sedimentary particulate in it that sort of sits on top of the fiber. Um, and that ends up creating a, a nice little, very subtle, pretty effect. So at this point, my paper is dry and I'm just using my thumb to rub it off. And if you can get a hold of one edge of it, you can just peel it off. If for some reason there are many months in between you applying the frisket and removing the frisket. You don't want to do that because it's going to be really hard to remove it um, if you let a lot of time pass. You want to do this within the next couple days. But the frisket dries, you know, within a matter of minutes. You may have seen me do something like this before. I wanted to show you another way you can play with your mist. Um, this is an antique handle die cut. It's a Sizzix die cut um, from their new Dina Designs Moroccan collection. You can brush on gesso, as you saw me just do, in a really random fashion and let that dry. And as you'll see, it'll change the way media absorbs. So areas that don't have uh, any gesso will become much more intense and vibrant and the areas that do have the gesso, you'll see um, some of the brush strokes and it'll also be a softer tint. So here it is drying and you can see by uh, combining the blue with red while it's wet, you get lots of different um, tones and I find this effect really pretty. Um, all different shades of purple, a little blue in some places, a little of the red in other places, and um, it's all nat very natural looking. I'm using a, I'm just loving these chalk edgers that have been com coming in the kit because they're just, they're the perfect size to handle um, on scrapbooking layouts and cards. And um, it's a fluid chalk ink, so it dries very quickly. And here you can see I'm accentuating those raised edges using the chalk ink that came in the base kit. I did just a bit of stamping with that fluid chalk ink and a wonderful little stamp set that came in the kit, in the base kit. And I actually ended up using all the stamps in that set. Um, it includes a little cute flower here and um, the word happiness, as well as a beautiful bird with uh, typography inside the bird. You can see how I slipped my photo mats inside the notches of the antique handles. I also layered some um, die cuts that came in the base kit. Uh, they're also from Bow Bunny. I love those, um, is it Fleur de Lis patterns? And I also used some um, scraps from a mixed media project that I did very recently that's um, the focus of another video that's coming out this week as well. I distressed the edges of these blossoms that came in the base kit using the fluid chalk ink 
and um, adhered most of these pieces, um, the embellishments, using hot glue. And um, I stuck some ripped up pieces of mulberry paper in as well and finished off my blooms with a little bit of bling. I added some alphas, sticker alphas that were included in the base kit and outlined them with a journaling pen and it says independence and I added a little bit of journaling. This was the kit that's patriotic for the year. Um, although July 4th has passed, um, I'm still gardening like crazy and I was just reading recently um, that there's nothing more patriotic, patriotic than growing and harvesting your own food. And I think it is the ultimate expression of independence. Um, and these days I'm finding nothing more satisfying. So that's why I included um, photos of seeds. Uh, my nasturtiums produced a whole bunch of seeds and I got to harvest them and replant them for another harvest because we have a really long growing season here. And I still have so many more that I've got sitting in my craft room in plastic bags. I harvested uh, dill seeds and the beautiful scent of dill is infusing my entire studio. Um, and I also started a worm composter using red wriggler worms and they are just going nuts uh, eating up all our um, vegetable and fruit food scraps. So anyway, I have some uh, stills to show you of my final layout. Uh, the purpose of sharing this video t with you today was just to show you a couple of different things you can do with your mists um, other than just simply spritzing. We did the misting with the preliminary step of using the liquid frisket in a freestyle fashion as a mask. We did misting using uh, gesso brushed on really haphazardly as a preliminary step to alter the way the mists absorb into the surface. We eyedroppered the mists onto natural fiber of these flowers with a cool um, sedimentation that's happening on the top. And here are just some shots of my focal images, my nasturtium seeds with all my layering. You can also see some of the stamping, and here are my red wriggler worm pets. If you haven't had enough inspiration, please visit me on my blog. That's www.contadinak.com. And um, to find out more about these amazing kits, if you haven't subscribed to them already, please visit scrapsofdarkness.com. If you'd like to see more of my videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. That's Contadina K. Thanks. Bye.